In today's gospel, the angel Gabriel's greeting, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. And Mary's final response, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Say it all. The Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We should have, by now, cleared up the confusion of whose conception we are referring to in this solemnity. In St. John Paul II's words, According to this dogmatic definition, it has been revealed by God that Mary was preserved from original sin from the moment of her conception. If you listen well to the Roman Missal Collect and Prayers for the Day, you will hear confirmation of this dogma. In the Collect, the celebrant prays, O God, who by the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin prepared a worthy dwelling for your Son, grant, we pray, that as you preserved her from every stain by virtue of the death of your Son, which you foresaw, so through her intercession, we too may be cleansed and admitted to your presence. And before the Sanctus, the celebrant further prays, for you preserve the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin, so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother for your son and signify the beginning of the church, his beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb who would wipe away our offenses. You placed her above all others to be for your people an advocate of grace and a model of holiness. Further confirmation of this is found in that on March 25, 1858, a 12-year-old peasant girl named Bernadette Subiru was drawn to the grotto where a beautiful lady had been appearing to her since the 11th of February that year. When Bernadette asked her who she was, the lady responded in the local dialect, I am the Immaculate Conception. Although only four years earlier, Pius IX had defined the Immaculate Conception as a dogma of faith, it was clear that a barely literate Bernadette would not have known much about what the lady's reply meant. The clergy at the time, however, knew its significance. Less than four years later, on January 18, 1862, the bishop signed the pastoral letter approving the apparitions, its supernatural character, and the authentic life of the missionary. But what does this all mean to me today? Two words, love and acceptance. The Immaculate Conception teaches us that in God's plan, his great love for us saw no barrier in the incarnation of his only son in order to save us. But he needed the cooperation of a virgin named Mary, who was, on receiving the news of God's plan, very understandably incredulous. How can this be, since I have no relations with a man, she asked. But after the angel Gabriel's explanation, she gave her now famous fiat, her consent to the Incarnation, in total acceptance of God's plan. To have been sinless is not an achievement, but pure gift, a gift of perfect love for the God she loves so perfectly is surely one of Mary's deepest joys, reads in part the Carmelite Order's website reflection on the Immaculate Conception. And so we pray, Dear Mother, help us to follow your example in loving the Father and accepting his holy will. Be our advocate of grace and model of holiness. Help us to understand that the Father's love and mercy are boundless and unconditional. Intercede for us always in our prayers of petition and gratitude. Amen.